Ladies and Germans, how are you all doing? I am Con Ulrich. And I'm Wang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we promised you a ripper of a game, and it is Thursday. And for some people, it's throwback. For us, it's for us. Wow, it's three on three action. We are fighting over here on Point to Huck. So three words in the name, three players on three players. Wang, who's duking it out? Well, on the left hand side on blue, we have Kick Smack. It's third Canadian. Salsat as four farmed, and incredible <laughs> as the 15th Scots. That's a good one. I like that. And on the right hand side, on the Axis side, we have Mickey as third Falchager, Sombra as 91st, and Lau as 9th Panzer Division. You know, it's kind of fun it, to see yeah, some of these guys here on here. Like, honestly, third Canadian and the Scots at the same time? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of fun divisions. I mean, we've got third Falchagers, Rao, 9th Panzer. It's definitely just. A really fun, even matchup, I'd have to say, and a pretty good map as well. So it's probably a lot of action as per usual for a free on free. And frankly, looking at these setups, yeah, we're gonna have some rather hefty amounts of action pretty damn quick. Mm -hmm. Somebody to the north looks like he's kind of probably gonna get overmatched by the early AVRE and Churchills coming out over here. Uh, from Monsieur Incroyable's 15th Scots. Uh, but regardless, I'm kind of stoked for this. this. This is... These are all powerhouses, sort of. Yeah, these are all pretty pretty damn good divisions. There's no real stinkers here. Now, Salsa Sut, um, how is that really going to work? You think that this guy, he's just going to steamroll what he's up against? He's, oh, yeah, he's up against um, 21st. 20th. 9th. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Ninth Panzer. He's just up against the Ninth Panzer. You think he's going to steamroll him, or is that just going to be... Uh, I think he's going to at least defend. Wherever he can push through an attack, that's a better question, because the area he's attacking into is really good Panzer 2, Panzer 1 territory. And yes, so his Hellcats are really annoying, but they're not good against close-range autocannons, and it'd be really difficult for him to push through. Do you have Abrams, though? And that's really going to be the kicker. But at the same time, there's a lot of Panzer Strikes here from Lau, so he's he's prepared. Excellent. I was actually hoping you would make that call out as well. Now, the Germans take a very, very even, I would say, defensive line across the entire field. It's going to start kicking yep. off in the north? Not quite. All right. Close. Close. Okay. First shots ring out in the center part of the map. Flammenwerf moving on in. Pop and smoke. That seems like a great idea. Uh, outside of that, there's that troop and spam to the north. Mm -hmm. And down to the south, 4th Armor starts to kind of engage that mortar half-track. Yeah, not not the best spot for that mortar half-track. May want to get him out of dodge here. Or, you know, smoke yourself. I think it's the smoke. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it does have the unenviable issue of cutting off a good amount of sight lines for that pegrin. Yeah, and that mortar as well. Is he... Ooh, well, yeah, you're right. It's going to be tough for that mortar to get a safe spot on that Abrams. There's no way a real, like, 1.2 kilometer shot that he could get on the Abrams. So it's going to be a bit risky. And uh, To the north, mortar. we are having some rather hefty engagements, but then again, the Death Star has not yet cleared itself to fire. The second that happens, that's when the real when the rubber meets the road here. Mm -hmm. And looking where he is, ooh, his P4 is just not going to see him. That's gonna be, that's so close. Redeploys, I don't know, another 30 meters to the north. That'd be pretty beastly. See the Afra? Uh, no, the, the the pack 40 to the north. Oh, yeah. He would have had a beautiful little side shot here, but uh, just a bit too far to the south. Now that he's announced his position, it's probably a better idea to recite, but mm -hmm. whatever. Down south, four farmed. Man's make a nice sort of dent so far into the ninth Panzer's line, forcing the Marder 3 or 4 back and just mm -hmm. rifles galore. But we do see the Panzer 2 being brought in, and he's doing a pretty good job. Close range. What's well, more than that, too? These peak runs really could be capturing a couple of these squads, but they're just taking mm -hmm. a much more. Uh, Let's say definitive posture. Let's if if we kill them, we don't have to worry about them getting loose later on. Yeah, four farmers, real like power down south. All really hinges on Abrams. Yeah. Yes. If Abrams goes down. Ninth could probably make a good counter push. Well, the question is though, is that ninth doesn't have a whole lot of real defensive positions other than where they are right now. If you push back past where the fourth armored is, 
yeah. especially for Creighton Abrams is you have what those two tree lines and then it's really kind of difficult to get to that next one yeah ninth really wants to try to hold him to his position because it's a, tr it's a really good counter against Hellcatch it's a lovely counter against Hellcatch it's probably going to be hard for him to push past it as that open field is Hellcat Hell mm -hmm. but if he can hold his area he should be fine and not to be outdone by the ferocity of fighting though Kicks Max and Mickey are definitely going at it uh, the Penta up there is getting some really decent work done, taking out a couple of lighter vehicles between the two of them. Um, and the LG40, this thing is such a weird looking piece of equipment, but it's so yeah. hard to hate on it. I know, it's, it's pretty cute. It's like, hey, we've got like a little AT gun, you know, a nice small package. It's also an IG-18 in a nice small package. Ooh, and a 210 being called in the center part of the map. I'm gonna like this bomb. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good hit here. And we've got a B1. Yeah, it's a B1. And he's going to come down and think he's going to try and get Abrams. No, he's going after the... He's going after AA. Never mind. He was going after AA, but... Uh, to see the apparently, that's not part of the 12-step program. <laughs> oh, you know why? Because we had a, a Mustang coming on. Yeah. Which is a good call. Uh, that was a bit anticlimactic, but you really can't be affording to lose those, hate those mighty ducks. No, you cannot. Indeed. No, you cannot. Up in Orsfield, we've seen uh, incredible. Man, to make a nice little flank around here, the Churchill Mark V. Well, one thing he's not going to be doing is seeing that Stuart getting used anymore. I think he gets knocked out with one shot, at least gets a bailout. Mm -hmm. And all the somber stuff is pretty much hold in. If, if I mean, if, if the Scots did have like pants around for Rich, obviously they don't. All, the, all this infantry being bunched up is just a lovely, lovely target. It's just trying to get artillery. But fortunately, Scots don't really have much artillery in any phase. Yeah, they don't even have an off map, do they? They don't even have no, that. No. That's a shame. That would have been a, absolutely devastating. Yeah. We do have an Avro in the Churchill, so it's just going to be about picking them off one by one. But the Renault tank going to be holding this ground. And yes, he has armor penetration value, so he could. Could if he forced a shot at it, yeah. Penetrate the Churchill Five. Could, not not probably, but could. I think it's more likely the Churchill's just gonna overwhelm his rather pathetic armor with HE shells. Yeah, that'd probably be what would happen. But it is fifty three forty seven, and a slight bulge is forming in German lines here. Uh, B one getting pushed back as Spitfires kind of doing their thing as well. No, sorry, ME one hundred nine. B one left a little while ago. Back in on the fourth armor down to the south. Abrams is still doing strong. He's uh trying to engage that martyr. It's gonna be too difficult here. That freaking AA half track is oh, just doing work. Yeah, Hellcat stinks a kill on the martyr, yeah. Ooh, I didn't even see the Hellcat there. Okay, yeah. yeah it just snuck on that's the thing of Hellcat, it's just sneak on they just sneak on in. Completely unannounced. They don't they don't even knock on the door, they just barge in your home. And before well, you that's know a, it, that's all cats everywhere, though, man. Like they yeah. just kind of walk in. They think they own the place. I know it's absolutely crazy. I'm a dog person. I won't lie. Same, same. More of a dog person myself. Uh, Panther Two Luke's is gonna get wrecked by this Hellcat. Yep, and there yeah. it goes. Heck, that even might even have been the CGMC for all I know. But yeah, Ninth Flame Panther is definitely starting to lose a little bit some too of much. The momentum. I didn't really have much momentum, but. Their defense is up north. They still have stuff here to hold with. It seems he has a lot of his pantheon deers on hold fire, which is a smart call. This yeah, Hellcat and Abrams is a real annoying combo, as well as the M15 and M21. B1 gets taken out in the north, by the way. Mustang? Yep. Yeah. No, no, Spitfire, excuse me. Spitfire. Churchill does go down, yo. Yes, well, the Pack 40 had it on the, on the road a long time, so. Yeah. So it's going to stop that flank at least. So we still have that MMG carrier trying to push his ray through. And he will for a time until, of course, more of this infantry gets pop brought on up to pop the blister. Yeah, but this 210 is now completely worthless. It's fired its last barrage. It's not going to do a whole lot with it, but hey. Yeah. I want to see Savrio get into position. Because if he, if he positions the average on the other side of that hedgerow, he just has perfect shots and on all of that 91st infantry. Yeah, but I don't think he's going to get that on a sight. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 
He, he extends about 150 meters southeast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be perfect spot for him. Meanwhile, the poor scout, not realizing whatever hit him, gets uh, completely obliterated, really, by a 210 shell. <laughs> poor bugger. Yeah, indeed. Uh, down to the south, we have another... I think we have another B1 down there, but there's an awful lot of ground fire. There's no way in heck he's going to get through that. A lot of smoke here from Ninth Panzer, really trying to block out Abram's line of sight. And we are seeing an M8 Cavalry breaking his way through in the northern little area here. So this is going pretty round. Hellcat repositioned down south, so he's really like opting himself to try and push all flanks, essentially. Well, one thing I'd like to see a little bit more of a little bit more mingling of forces. I cannot help but feel that a Panzer Abfea down to the south would have been very, very helpful. A 250 meter range would have been great for taking out a couple of these vehicles, at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, not for nothing, the P Grunzo. It's nice to see, you know, the, the Faust, but the Faust has 150 meters, and that 100 meters is really, really important. Yeah, it's <laughs> it is pretty important indeed. But thing is, Lauer, he's he's still holding. I mean, it's just getting really, really like tough now. He's lost a lot, and Full Farmer has many, many vehicles here. But he's he's still holding onto his area at least. Ask yourself this, though. I mean, what else is there to do? He's not going to go and be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to surrender the field. <laughs> no, no. He just needs... His his main objective at the moment to be trying to just kill tanks, essentially. Like, knock off those cavalry, uh, M8s mm -hmm. and Abrams and all of that. Probably with some good Panzer Shrek shots, most likely. Well, there's one of them right now. And it's up! He shoots for the scout car. Oh, no, that wasn't him. Okay. Scout car somebody else. Oh, there it is. There's, there the, there's the cavalry kill. All right, there we go. That's exactly what he needs. He's getting the Panzer IVs now. we got a B1 down south as Mickey is providing some fire support. If that B1 can kill something, yeah, that'll be good. He's going for Abrams. Ammo storage. Storage. Here. He's still going to die, though. Between yeah. the CGMC and the Spitfire <laughs> and all that other ground fire, yeah, he's definitely toast. Yeah. There's one rocket plane coming on in, trying to engage a Spitfire before he goes down. No. Nope, he's going to go down anyway. Yeah, that, that rocket plane's probably not going to long for that road either. Uh, turn, he's going to turn and burn at least. I mean, the Spitfire might get a couple of bursts. It's not going to do a whole lot. Oh, yeah. Another 210 coming on into the center. Uh, MG, MG carrier to the north might get taken on out by some Shreks. It was such a waste to put a Shrek into an MG, MMG carrier. <laughs> I know, it's probably cost more money to sh like the rocket itself for probably yeah not, exactly you get the idea but it's still a plus one over here for the allies and there goes the mmg carrier and now we just have rifles and a rifle leader cut off from the rest of the world yeah that was a pretty good bulge yeah it's an incredible head for quite a while but it's about to oh no it reconnects there we go six pounder and no oh. now, now it's cut off oh right no oh. Is that a bulge in your pocket? Just happy to see me, Mr. Incredible. I think he's very I think he's very happy to see you, Khan. I know uh, I am. Aww. <laughs> Can we just say about that for the record? I'm I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more veterancy when SD two comes out. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to see this more stuff. Yep, including T Hungarians. And ten man SG squads. Oh no, that's gonna be disgusting. That's gonna be... <laughs> disgusting. It's the ROA troops on the eastern front. Fighting for their actual country. Mm -hmm. uh. But in the north, I'm surprised that Somber's troops have not been aggressed on really that much. It might just be because there's so much freaking infantry fire support. <laughs> I think it's that... just... Yeah. You can't do it. It's just too Possible, much man. stuff. Yeah. Just... And the Scots, they don't really have that rocket artillery or... You know, they have much more precision tools to really deal with stuff. It would just take them a little bit too long, I think. You know, to just blow up every single building individually one by one i am trying to figure out who's going to get the advantage down here in the south i mean like we talked about fourth army has been absolutely blitzing a lot of the ninth material 
But the ninth again has a super strong defensive position. Like, where where are you gonna break through on this map? <laughs> no, it's 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 gonna be a tough map to move through. It's 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 complete utter hedgerow hell. The entirety Ooh, of it. Actually, you know what? You see that P Grant is on hold fire just to the north of that scrum in the south. Yeah, in the town. That right. Th well, with all the surrendering P Grants. Yeah. That right there, if you extend east-west along that, west, that's definitely a position for the Germans to break through. I'm not sure how yep. simple that might be. That's definitely an option by the crossroads, for sure. Oh, this cavalry, the M8, gonna get killed up north by the Panzer IV. We've got two Panzer IVs also down south engaging. Does need some more infantry, and he could probably retake his forest. But we've got the Hellcat coming around the corner. And those Panzer IVs are really a bit too close to one another. I mean, you know, squad tactics and all, but... They're going to be taking suppressive fire. Theoretically, you would think this should get some kind of accuracy on them. F falling back, I guess, is probably the best he's going to hope for. Mm -hmm. Bazooka, Ooh. run. Damn. Rocket plane on Abrams. Not enough. Look at all that ground fire. He's going to take it out by ground fire. <laughs> yep. Jesus. You do not, like... He's not mesh with full farmers of airplanes, because they just get those M15s. And all you need is drone 15s and as you see, you're good. You're completely fine. Ironically, the M the M15s weren't the things that were firing. One was, perhaps, but there's no one there that just did absolutely nothing. He still has a full ammunition load. Huh. What a useless what a useless bugger. Exactly. Just kinda just hanging on out. Oh no, it's a supply truck nearby, that's right. I was hoping you weren't gonna notice that. I saw that and I was like, <laughs> just maybe he won't see it. <laughs> If I didn't see it, I think the viewers would have uh, as would as well. Oh, yeah. Then we'd have to fight the comments, and you never fight the comments, Khan. You never fight the comments. And I know that the commenters are smarter than I am. Let's put it that way. And me too. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> God damn it. Wow. Um, I meant you were smarter than me. Not not that. Oh famous. no, I thought you meant the comments. Is... Oh no no. Are you serious? Well. <laughs> I have. That's, that's something we'd have to big. test in the ring. It's a bit like a Steel Division trivia night. Oh, you you would destroy me. I, you know what? Again, I still think we should celebrate our first SD2 cast with a bingo. So, if people out there want to help us develop that, I would be more than happy to do bingo. Same here. That would be fantastic. I know, I know uh, Proto Soccer, I know you've been watching these videos. I know, you, I know you're definitely on board. Help us develop it. We'll go for it. Um, Up to the north, we do have ourselves a small brace of 396 artillery pieces. Is enough to break the deadlock by taking out those 25 pounders on the opposite side. And indeed, the Germans are able to claw back to at least a nothing, nothing game. Yeah, the Allies are still in the lead. They have a very nice point of advantage, but still, we're only going to. We're, we're only three minutes away from C face. This still can really be anyone's game. Yeah. Very, very true. The AVRE still alive? No, he went down, didn't he? He went down. Wow. Yeah. He's, he's definitely kaput, and Chomber is making that push up north. It's got slow human raver, so Fauci is mixing the verse out to troop and fantastic yeah. combination. A move. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is, is that the Churchills, unless the Churchills can get out of that little Woodrow area that where he is, he's not going to get any further. No. Like, no. It's going to be literally impossible to get there. Well, Somber really needs to get his anti-tank up to, you know, blow up all the tanks so he can move up the infantry in a rather simplistic manner. We're going to check back into the south. Ooh, it's going to be a very, very interesting call-in. What's that call-in coming from? Ooh, it's a, three, it's a 380! Oh, boy. Uh, not going to do enough immediate damage in my mind, but it's definitely going to make those guys need to change their pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And... The ninth is fighting over that square forest still. And it's just absolute bedlam as that American mortar is just pinning everything down. Well, that's just the American mortar. There's also that GMC. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's really going to put a hole in the German lines. Oof. And unfortunately, that off-map Colin just completely obliterates... That 10-man squad it hit it three places exactly again and again and again. <laughs> Second. Another call-in. It being called a little bit too short there. <coughs> At least in my, my thinking, anyway. Really? He just really wants that bloody more half-track dead. 
To be fair, I can't blame him. I know. It's definitely been a pain in the ass. Checking back into the north real quick to see how that push is going. It's it's slowed down a smidge. Mm -hmm. But again, those 396s, I think those 396s are what's kept over in this. I'm actually allowing this, too. Yeah, yeah, one of them might go down to uh, Sexton, counter, not Sexton, 25 pounder counter battery fire. It's really just a battle of artillery up north between both of these infantry ish divisions. The mortar half track. K380 is hitting all around it, but not really doing anything with it. There we go. Wow, that's a lot of freak out. Luckily for fourth armor there, there's only one shell that impacted on those five units. If that had been any more concentrated, he probably would have had a lot of casualties there. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. But ninth, I mean, he's taking lots of casualties still, but he's still, still holding on against fourth armored, you know, aggression, which is going, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty good. It's just. Now down to his Panzer fours. Try and knock out his armoured. Armor. Well, one of them's got to go down between the... Oh, no, Abrams. Can Abrams not see him? He can see him now. <coughs> he's got the 105 here. He's... Yep. Returning shots. Well, we have another th off-map Colin coming to the south from Mickey. Oh, no, Mickey's deploying him more centrally. Okay, that kind of makes more sense. No, to be fair, it's surprising that two Falsh Mega divisions are standing up to really three mechanized divisions. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a pretty good map for for those Proud Shaker style divisions. As mm -hmm. you know, it's not it's not completely open. I mean, in the middle, we haven't really paid much attention, but Mickey, he's holding. I mean, he's not really going to gain much ground, and Kicksman isn't really being too aggressive either, but. It's really going to come down to, I guess, use of both of uh, Sombra's and Mickey's air power. Especially in sea phase now, as Mickey has all points to buy airplanes. question is, will he? Yeah. Really, I mean, down south it's kind of tough to use him because he's got his bloody M15s. And mm -hmm. that's where he really needs it, be runs down south to try and knock out American armor. But that just won't be the case. And we just got a lot of 4th Armored Infantry pushing through. It's maybe enough to break the ninth lines. Yeah, I would certainly expect it to be. But Mickey is going to call it a first 380 blow up over here in the center part of the map. Well, there's the infantry out of the way. Mm hmm. But he may be trying to push through here. That's a better question. He might be able to get enough to get back to 50 50, but you're not doing much more than that. Yeah. And still, the Germans, they need. I mean, they. I mean, if they just get a plus run right now, they'd be doing pretty good. But still, it's really anyone's game at this point. You're actually seeing a bit of a breakthrough from uh, Kicksmax in the northern middle section. It's got a nice little cav group, so to Ooh. speak. Yeah, and Mickey, I think, has concentrated all his forces to the south. You're seeing yeah. right now that that off map's dead. That's got nothing there. I think Sombra is actually making some push to the north, too. You can just see the weight of fire is absolutely ridiculous. He's almost this desperate line kind of being constructed between you know, a couple of rifle squads um, and really just with 25 pounders. Yeah. Churchill, Mark VI, being brought in to hold the line as well. Uh, this is getting pretty, pretty tight here. Up north, 15 Scots is starting to run out of steam a bit. Yeah, you know, we do have a Flak 88 in the center part of the map, though, too. Yeah. Be enough to hold the choke point, at least, for now. Yeah, I would think so. Unless it gets bombed. Well, it's first it gets bombed, but I mean artillery. But there's no artillery nearby, so he should be good. B1 coming to the center. He's going after the Shermans and then the Staghound AA. And he does get run. Oof. And there's Flak 88 opening fire on the Ram, too. But no, he doesn't see him just yet. Yeah. No, he's going after those chasing Spitfires, which I'm not sure why I would turn an ME-109 ground attack back into two Spitfires, but uh, okay. I think he's going to get out. No, nope. no, no, no. Nope, no, not a chance. No. Okay, B1's got to pull out, guys. Pull out the B1. No. Come on, Mickey. You B1's pull out game is not strong. He's, he's, he's going to get roasted here. 
Oh no, Spitfire has... No, what? no, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine. Two kills. Two kills on this... No, wait, never mind. Here oh, we go. No. Ah. I thought the 88 was gonna get the, like, the next... Oh no, the other 88 gets this done up. But will the B1 get out? The goddamn full farm with meat grinder? Yes, sir. Oh, damn, that is a lucky B1. Uh, take it back to the north, where we have a billion and a half everything else. By the way, uh, crowd attack ME109 takes out the Churchill. Damn. So at this point, there is nothing to stop this slowly flowing tide of red. Yeah, it's just like an amalgamous blob worth yeah. of stuff. Like, Shombra hasn't really <laughs> lost anything. He's just getting building and building and building and building and now we're just seeing the results of that this is so much goddamn shit like jeez we've got everything thrown in that ball we got hodge kisses renault's fault shakers ersatz mortars packs ig18 stoogs it's just a lot, a lot of taste of everything german and a few french things mixed in one flak 88 goes down second one's getting freaked out a bit by all the uh, bombs that have been coming his way but opal blitz is coming on forwards trying to plug up that gap i don't think it's going to be enough though two spots of infantry with aa as well as sherman's mm -hmm. and incredible calls for help in the north he knows he's overmatched yeah sombra this may be enough to push through at the same time kicks even though up north in in bloody hell incredible you know he he's losing ground kicks is meant to you know at least reverse the tide a bit by taking the middle and he's just pretty much got that entire middle section now under his control. So that's going to be kind of annoying to slowly take back. And if he manages to maneuver his rain down south and try to flank ninth, that would be really deadly. Well, that uh, flak 88 is going to go down because of the courtesy of the sextons. But at the very least, they're going to be shoved back rather heftily. Oh, yeah. Did not mess around with Canadian free cell sextons. Oh, no. It's just... Like, um, that reload, that's, like, three seconds. It's nuts. I'm just stuck with rapt attention at this fighting in the north. Like, I, I am mm -hmm. shocked. I can't what? even tell what's going on. No, it's just this, again, I mean, we have Airsoft Troopin who are running out of ammunition. That's how long he's been keeping some of these guys up. Damn. Yeah, I think up north is to say, you know, select everything and attack move sort of ideal. I mean, without yeah. much stuff, you can't really micro it. Uh, but yeah, but you know what? Look at the orders. He definitely has gotten some kind of idea there. Okay, yeah. And more stuff's going into the meat grinder as well. So you have four more squads coming in. We have a supply truck to kind of keep these artillery pieces up and running. And while that 88 is going to live for a little bit longer yet... Uh, was this that 3... Oh, it's a 210 column. That's why. All right, wow. 17 pounder to the north goes down. Hmm. The Churchill's basically the only thing keeping everything back. And really, the second that this artillery finds its range on top of them, I wouldn't want to be them either. Same, same. You're all seeing an 88 being brought in up north again. I think he's going to deploy it. Yeah, it's not going to deploy that aggressively, actually. And honestly, even though I don't really think it's a good idea to deploy 88 aggressively, up north now would be the time to do so. Well, we have Shades of Corbeau. We have a couple of L6s coming to the fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have bloody first foul check. I haven't seen any L6s till now. That is... Surprising. Awful surprising, yeah. I mean, that was usually, like, the immediate A-phase unit you get, and you try to tank rush into the enemy spawn and hope for the best. But that's cool, yep. Ray. Yeah, and honestly, I, on this particular map, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But still, it says the Germans are getting that slow plus one. Really thanks to Sombra up north. I think it's really going to come down to whether they can pop his pimper in the middle. If they can do yeah, yeah, they could probably get a victory. Up north here, we've got a bunch of rocket runs. Rocket in array. Yeah, I don't know if it's a pimple. That's the issue. Yeah, and the credible calls for aid again. He's not getting a whole lot of it. No, I think... Um, yeah, I mean, Kix is definitely very much focused in the middle because that's pretty important to hold. And Full Farmer down south, he's starting to lose a bit of ground now. Just starting to run out of stuff. 
But Abram's still alive, yo. He's managed to survive. Yeah, he oh. still has a decent amount of ammunition, too. Oh, yeah. wow. Tiger has a jam down south. He's got to pull that bad boy back. He does. He really he really does need to pull that back. He can't, he can't afford to lose those Tigers this length. Does he want to get two of them? Those are only heavy tanks. And here is, I think that pimple you were talking about, I think it's slowly getting popped over up there, moving on in. So, Staghound, if we if we be the first to feel the sting, mm -hmm. that's one. The L60s, are, are they just going to make their end rush around trying to get the, the ramp for the side? It's not going to go well. <laughs> that's not going to go well at all. Oh, no, they're just engaging that, that rifle squad. Yeah. That makes more sense. Popping out little pimple, yeah. Oh, yeah, but just... you know, ooh, but look down at that foot. Look at that. Look at that. All that territory that something just opened up. Down, all, all down south, yeah. Yes. Cav scouts and the WC. Yeah, this is getting, this is getting really close. There's only 10 minutes left and it still, still really can't be anyone's game. Yes, sir. Like, both, both sides, you can start, I can really start to get an idea. Both of them getting pretty desperate now and... They were trying to win this goddamn match. Well, the Germans don't hold this back. The, the Allies get off the beaches, so... Mm -hmm. Oh god, this is really quite perfect how the Allies are set up. How they're on the beach side of the map. That's really perfect. Hands are up there, moving to the north. Oh my gosh, get back with... We're back in Sombra. The Firefly Causes goes down. Out. Oh, the oh, Firefly went down? From what? The L6 Middle, to the 38? I think it was... I think it was probably 38. I want, I want to say it was the LCX. Oh, so it's, uh, the, the pack, sorry, the Gerlich. No, Gerlich. oh no, it's a Gerlich and there's a 38. There's two of them. Yeah. It's probably one or the other. But damn, that's a good kill. And the Ram is also gone, I believe. It stops zooming in and out. But we do have more Shermans in them coming in, so that's going to be rather, rather tough. It is, but at the same time to the north, I think we'll see that plus one again in a second for the Germans. Yes, we do. And these 17-pounders are not like some of their other allied divisions. They get no HE. Oh, no. Oh, no. So they kind of kind of bug it when the infantry start knocking. Now Mickey calls for aid. He realized he cannot hold the line. And uh, that might be why we get another Stug in. We're getting the... Oh, yeah. Okay, so P4's moving on in to kind of help stem mm -hmm. the tide there. Yeah, Lau's going to respond in kind. Mickey's been holding him down south. But Lau's going to help him. In the middle, Rain needs it. Wait, wait, wait look, look at the middle. We have this crazy furball that's ready to happen. Bit fires, ME 109s, a B3 is coming on in. There goes one kill. Absolute nuts. Absolutely nuts. We're going to see, there's at least going to be two kills here coming on through. That's one on the Spitfire, and this other Spitfire is going to die as well. Yeah, it's going to be a German victory in the air for sure. That's exactly wow. what they need. Wow, he's not, he's not getting the, oh, he's, no. they're not taking the run on him. Huh? This is that's risk it. surprising. Oh no, he's going for strafing on the set 25 pounder instead. But Sombra, he is making loads of territory up and off. Well, and this Fashion Maker is going to go and just blow this Churchill from the back. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Boom. We could see a plus two here in a second. That would be rather sharp and surprising to me. Yeah, and the Axis need that plus two right now if they want to be, uh, you know, winning the match. Can we take a quick look at the 4th Armored Artillery Park? We have all four, <laughs> with five GMCs, M12s. Why, why do you take... I've never what? seen that many. I've seen, like, one in a given map. I'm usually like, okay, I take, like, one card of C-Face M12. So I'm playing another, you know, grass of armor division, but... Dude, if this was still Division 2, there'd be no defensive fortifications left. No, no. Oh. Can we just say, I'm so excited for that. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm really excited for it, because it's gonna make, like, like the Avra... Actually, going to be able to fulfill it, fulfill its actual job of blowing up bunkers. Yes. It's, and yes. crocodiles and flamethrower tanks are going to be really useful for for dealing with those sort of fortifications. It's great. Yep. Satchel charges, all of that. Ah. Oh. I could not be more excited it's, for this game coming out. It's I, so... I I won't lie. When they said like Seal Division Two, I was like, okay, I like Seal Division One, but eh, let's see how we can do this. There's a lot of new innovations coming out, guys, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I can't wait for it. I'm I'm stoked. I'm absolutely stoked. Uh, the pimple's getting popped, my friend. Oh god, the Shermans have been forced to run away. And they That's won't be fighting surrender. another day. There's, a, there's the plus two. 
Us. He forks in a nice little side shot here. Oh my gosh, he's going after... There we go. That's another kill. Damn. And the uh, M12 GMCs, well, they're just firing everywhere in a desperate attempt to keep the Germans at bay, but I don't think that's going to happen. We actually have a spa trooper rush coming down south as well. What? I think 9th has run out of infantry. That's probably it. Probably it. And the Canadians are almost back inside the sea. They've almost been pushed back to the sea. Oh, yeah. Especially you know, inter up north. Interestingly, um, when the D-Day landings did happen, that was the entire plan. So, okay, we, did, we didn't stop them on the beach. We're just going to wave them back. There's a massive, massive wave. Mm -hmm. I want to say, was it, I think, I want to say it was the British beaches who got hit pretty hard by a couple of German spoiling attacks. I might be wrong. I think so, yeah. It wasn't like the German doctrine was to like, let them come on, come in inland and then fight them inland instead of trying to push them back off the beaches immediately. There were armored columns waiting to redeploy. That was the whole one shot yeah. thing. But then uh, Allied air power just absolutely <laughs> murdered anything that moved. Yeah. I remember like hearing like a few stories of like Allied pilots at D-Day and they're flying around they're like, oh boy, they're ready to go and they're just flying around doing their like fighter patrol sorties and there's just nothing. There's nothing yeah. to do. It's, yeah. Like, completely anticlimactic on, you know, bloody D-Day. No, no planes to shoot down. A couple of hedge hopping kind of troops yeah. and that's about it. Yeah. Ooh, kangaroos. I think it, it's a, it's a, oh my gosh, it's going to be a field day here for Wolverine and two kangaroos. Looks like the uh, Australian wildlife is going to go down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Up there, it hits something with a beautiful long distance shot. We're going to see another one of those or no? No, we see discretion is better part of valor. And I think the Germans might have this in the bag. Yeah, they pretty much got the allies in full retreat at the moment. It's an up north and in the middle. Fourth armor's still holding on, but. It's not really much left. It's really just down to a goddamn artillery park. That is such a cheesy artillery park. It's like, you know you know how expensive our artillery park is, Khan? Like a thousand points by itself? Yeah, it's a thousand points and just goddamn them troves. I can't even, like, speak and how well, crazy it is. It's weird to me. And you're saying that fourth armor is holding its territory? I, you know... <laughs> Not much anymore. Yeah, it's and I think, just... and, and why is because they called in all that artillery, so they're calling in tanks. Yeah. That's a lot of goddamn artillery. One more B3 with one Spitfire here is going to ruin his day. We're stepping into the attack on that Churchill. And we're probably going to lose a B3, but you know what? At this point, it does not matter. No. It has cost the Germans inestimable lives here, but they are shoving back on those allies. The allies have nothing left. Mm -hmm. And Sombra almost has just one point up north under his control. Churchill does go down, and it's very close again at spawn point. It's just riflemen stopping him. But so player of the match it has to be Sombra, doesn't it? Yeah, he's definitely man to capture at northern side. I'd have to say. But at the end of the day, all players have been doing like a pretty good job in like contributing to the battle. Like this has been a really damn good match. Yeah. Well, we, we promised you a real uh, a real thriller there, but uh, mm -hmm. ooh, uh, and uh, Hicks Max's supply trucks, all of his universal universal carriers, his commanders. He's got to have like nothing left in terms of units as well, doesn't he? He's got the yeah the Panzer IV. Pushed. Kicks Max Kicks Max is tapped out. He's got a couple of st units that are all surrendering. Yeah, the Panzer Four is just making a raid downtown. And plus three, so yep, Salsa Suck comes out, and there's going to be a tap out as well from Monsieur Incroyable. And, uh, wow. I honestly was expecting to go differently from the way that that match started. Mm hmm. But they managed to pull, that, pull them back in the end. Yeah, Sombra getting a really good KD advantage. Yeah, geez, that was quite a nutty KD. Like, over two to run. And if we just look at the history, it's a madhouse. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, yeah, it's a three v three. It's absolutely not. There is the one end. third. There's a one third Falschmaker B one, Ferenbacher. He's got a Sexton, a Sherman, a Staghound, a Ram, and a Wolverine. So he's an instant ground ace right there. Oh, that, that's damn. that's pretty damn good. That's pretty good for B one. Yeah. With a Stug as well, who took out a priest, a Sherman, a Wolverine, and a kangaroo, which something at the beginning of a bad joke. And the Panzer four. Mm hmm. Hit take that. That's infantry, though, so. Uh, oh, yeah. Ground and this, this is only, like, kills for. Uh, yes. They've only seen them against Canadian stuff, so he could have killed them all, but. Really... 
We will never know unless we go for the history and count everything individually, which we're not going to do. Because that would be another 40 minutes of video. Yes, and I, there's a limit to how much you guys take of us talking, I know. So, yeah. um, But in any case, so that was an incredible game. I, mm -hmm. I, nothing else to say about it. Uh, and I think I think that might be it for our coverage for this week for Steel Division or one, um, I don't know. I think I might be trying to plan some Steel Division two stuff soon, but uh, I guess that's a, another discussion for another day. Yep. Uh, but for right now, uh, he's Rangru, and you are Conori. Ah, have a great day, everyone. Bye bye.